Hey everyone, it's Joe Nazaeus here from The Automator, and today I got a really exciting thing. I, I worked on this like over 10 years ago, and it was really astounding that I just never got back to it. Um, we're going to talk about the ADO, the Active Data X Objects uh, functionality. This has been built into Windows since 1997. So in Windows 95, you had access to this tool. And what's phenomenal about it is you can open up almost any like database, but also like text files using SQL and do amazing things. SQL is crazy powerful. That's super fast working with large files. You can help use it just to dedupe things or you know only pull in one field instead of all of them. Um, you can filter on it. You can do counting. You could do really advanced stuff like subqueries, which we're not going to get into this video, but I just want to give you an idea of like there's amazing stuff you can do with it. You could join text files based on a given you know item. So right. crazy powerful. Um, we're going to do a couple explanations here of what you need to do. There, this is only right now the library we're using is V1. Um, we didn't see a V2 version, so we're just using this one. But we want to show you the concepts and let you know it's available because. Hey, this is awesome. You don't need the SQLite DLL file to work with this. So any computer that you're working on would have access to ADO. You need the like this library or create your own or whatever, but crazy powerful. There you go. So the, the point is we are a um most of the times dealing with CSV files uh, because it's easier. It's easier to create. It's easier to um, work with. It's really easy to kind of like read those files. Um, a DLL, uh, sorry, a database file like a SQLite database. You cannot open it in Notepad, for example. So you will need the SQLite database uh, DLL file to be able to read those. But um, the most powerful thing about SQL is how easy it is to build the SQL strings and how easy they are to read uh, read out. So anybody who even doesn't have a, an idea of how what SQL is or whatever can read a statement and understand more or less what's going on. And it is very easy to learn. Now, the most powerful thing about SQL is that you can extract data exactly the way, the way how you want it. So you want to build a table. And I'll show you some examples of that really quickly. But here, uh, the, what we're doing right now, the only thing needed is the ADO SQL uh, library. As Joe mentioned, this is only for V1. Even though what the library is doing is connecting to a COM object. So you can do that also in V2. The only thing is that um, the library just hides a very specific part of dealing with those com objects, which is looping through the record set, which is usually a little bit confusing. But if you know how to do that, then you don't need really a library. You can just connect to the com object directly and do it yourself. Now, as this is V1, we're setting up the batch lines to minus one. And this is the important part. You need a connection string. This is a set of properties that you have to tell the ADO library to which driver to connect. And this is what Joe mentioned. This driver comes with Windows since 1995. So it is something that is in virtually in every single computer. And now these are the properties that we want to read. Um, if, want to, if we want to include the, he the headers, if, it, if we're reading a limited file, if we're using uh, the Unicode character set and some other things, right? Now, one quick thing that you have to take into account is that when you're doing this with the ADO SQL, there are some values in the registry that are read automatically, and you can kind of like overwrite them with a schema.ini file. Now, for each file um, that you want to work with, you have to tell what the format is. It could be CS, uh, the default is CSV delimited, which is comma delimited, but the file that we're working with is not comma delimited, it is tab delimited. So what I'm telling on the schema file is, okay, that text file that I'm working with is tab delimited. If you don't do this, some of the things might not work out as you expect if the file is tab delimited, because it would be expected to be CSV delimited by default in the registry. This just overrides that temporarily. If you want, you can overwrite that on the registry directly, and then you don't need the schema any file. 
so you don't have to remember that. But in our case, we're just creating the schema ini file right next to our script, and uh, we're passing some options to what is called the connection string. So what do we need? Well, we need the database name, which is usually the file name of the file that you want to read. It could be the path to it. Um, right next, uh, this file is right next to my script. That's the reason why I'm just uh, talking about the file itself. But if it was in a folder called DB, I would just put DB and then the name of the file. That's okay. And this is the SQL statement that we want to run. In this case, um, we're just counting how many lines this file has and just displaying that using a different library that we have is called output window. You can use output debug if you want, but this one allows me to have the same output in different editors. That's why we're using it. So I'm just calling the function here, passing the connection string that we set up here, which is something that, for example, I, I, I just have it on my, on my um, uh, prompt assistant tool so that I just paste it really quickly. I don't have to remember it. I just copy, have it there, and I just paste it without any issues. And the SQL statement that we just created in which I just used that as a um, um, variable so that I can change the file that I want to read very easily. That's it. Just these four lines of code. Again, we don't have to download DLLs. We don't have to do anything. It is using the Microsoft uh, uh, you know, text driver for this. And you will see that here, the file has 100,000 lines of uh, data. It is a, a large file. It has a lot of data in it. But here's the funny thing. I could just say, OK, let's go ahead and uh, let me comment this out real quick. Uh, let me open up a different statement that I have here. Um, hey, select everything, so all the, all the columns from that pile where the things that match this, that the day column is Monday, for example. So if I go ahead and do this, you will see that the script just went ahead and give me a table only with all the records that match Monday on the day. Again, this is a CSV file, a tab delimited file, which is something that you cannot do without a hotkey unless you use a loop. You would have to loop read the thing, find on the column that you want, whether it matches and then do that. So you have to do a lot of loops for that. In this case, I don't have to do that and notice how fast it is. But it's let's just that also yeah. the order higher than 150. Okay, and order more than at 150. We got odor. I don't think we want that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it would be order, right? If I could spell. So now I could try that. This By the way, we switched to a smaller file just for this video to demonstrate it. Like it's right. Mm -hmm. Let me let me double check if the order, if we have any orders that have that. Well, you do. Yeah, maybe that's being read as a string. It's possible. Ah, uh, yeah, that is probably so a string. It, it, you know, it takes some practice of understanding how it's grabbing it. And remember that we are using we we do not have the SQL light um, syntax. This is right. SQL. So there's a few things that are done a little bit differently, but I know that the AND command, you can join different commands. Like for example, if I want to match Mondays and Tuesdays, I could just put that in my list. I think it was T-U-E for Tuesday, right? So I have Mondays, I have Tuesdays. Um, let me see, or, oh no, it had to be an AND because I just want to match the ones that are like that. Um, Make it just a straight up equal. Right, let's, let's see. Let's order equals 956, for example. Let's try that. That should give me at least one record. Let me see something. Where order equals, ah, remember that this is a string probably. Oh, that's interesting. Huh, that's, that, that's something that I'm not really, uh, let me see, day equals Monday. That works. Not sure why the, the, the order is not matching. How about value? Value equals 22. Let me see, like this first, that or this. 
that worked as a number. So this is okay. And then order. Well, why don't you, before you do that, change it, change the value to greater than 22. Okay. Value. Just to see if it truly is treating it as a number. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the values that are, That's but the order itself, I think, and this is one of the things, it, it is the library, the library that I'm using seems to be reading the last column in a very different way. There might be an, uh, a new line in there. I don't know. But basically, as you can see, I, I can do this and, and, and then match the things. Like um, we said at the beginning where day in, so day in, we had Monday here and the value more than 22. If you're at the end. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So now I should have all the Mondays, but if the value is more than 22, you, so it will not give me something below that number. Let's also add a, where uh, a like where the, um, the email has like, uh, let's say 26 in it, two, okay. two, six. So, in it. Okay. So now, and email, so that's the email like, and this time we will need this and then 22 probably or 26. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There we so go. we have some of them that has a 2 2 in it, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the value is more. So we can create these strings that I, what I'm saying, and, I, and that's uh, something that you have to be careful with. Uh, the, the library might have its own quirks. So you have to be wary of those but in general as you can see this thing i am doing a query on a file that has thousands of rows and i'm returning just what i want so for example instead of returning everything let's say that i just need the email and the order this is usually not that easy to do with a CSV file, because you have to build that string yourself, looping over it. And let's say you wanted to change email to actually say email address. As and now I'm using kind of like a um, uh, an alias, yeah. email address. And now my column is actually changed to email address, and the order is there. So this is really flexible. If you need to extract data from a that, uh, from a CSV or TSV file. Um, and it doesn't matter how many lines it has. It is a little bit faster than you creating your own loops because looping in our hotkey, you have to be very efficient with them. If you don't know how to use loops, it, you might uh, find yourself spending too much time looping through a file. Um, and, but this kind of things, like it helps with this. It makes it easier for you to extract data and create a table that now you can parse however however you want this you can convert it into an object you can do whatever you want with it yeah now the the bummer part of it is also is you can't actually create a database file which is is ace and i really beat our i mean I, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how do we create a database file with this because i don't want to always be reading the the csv files and then taking that overhead to read them create my tables create my structure and do stuff and we realized finally we're like we gave up that like, there's no way to well, create a database actually no, no no we didn't give up i think um what happens is i just started thinking about it in a different way if you want to create a new database you just file append file append and then you have your headers email but you're uh, still creating like a, a tab delimiter csv file right like you're not creating a database Oh, I want mean like creating a, a data, a, an actual database out of this. No, yeah, I, I get your point now. Yes. So no, yeah, I cannot create a... a, a Let's say you have data sources where you're like, oh, I'm going to join all these. I'm going to save them as a database. So now I have yeah. my database and it's simpler. You can't do that with ADO. No, no, you cannot. You would have to Still, build your database with yeah. another tool. Yeah, but... Um, you could still, it doesn't really, it's so fast anyway, it honestly just doesn't seem to matter, right? Like, right, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's crazy powerful. It, it does have some, you know, 
We use ADO for very simple query, and everything we showed you here is still crazy simple. There's more advanced yeah. stuff you could do, but when you start like trying to join things and insert and update records, that gets to be more. We have we're like, yeah, that's a little. You know, we'd switch to the SQLite approach, but that of course requires you have the SQLite uh, DLL file. Um, and so but that was just because I am more used to using the SQLite syntax. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you are very comfortable with using the the SQL, uh, the normal I would well, say normal SQL uh, syntax, it would be easy for you to convert this to whatever you need. Also, to your point, is that the library we were using with ADO didn't have that functionality necessarily, and that's right. where exactly I know we're talking to you when you're dealing with the record sets. We could do those things. Yeah, it's just what we're doing didn't have that, and so we're like, okay, well, we'll just switch to SQLite for our purposes. It didn't matter for now, uh, right? Yeah, this is a, it's a, I just want to make sure you guys understand, like sometimes, man, if you have large files and you're trying to peek inside them or filter the data or drop out, I only need these columns, crazy fast, great, flexible tool that you have your hands on. So if you enjoyed that video, please like the video. Uh, if you learned something, it really helps us out. If you like the video, if you get the hint, like the video. Yeah. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, we release videos Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're the largest auto hockey channel out there, and it really helps us out. Cheers.